Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to give you the full review of the Vic VK1560 Pro Pen Display. I have already made the unboxing video, so if you want to see the things that are included, you can check out that video. The link is in the video description below. Today, I'm going to show you what the driver can do as well as the drawing performance of this pen display on Windows and Mac OS. Now, this video is going to be a bit long, so if you want to save time, you can actually check out the text review that I have already written. The content in the text review and this video review is the same. Price for this pen display at the time of this review is US $379 on Amazon.com and sometimes they have certain promotions. So right now they have this 15% discount promotion, which is $56 off. $379. For the price, you are going to get a 15.6 inch IPS panel. The resolution supported is 1920 by 1080p. Now this is a very comfortable size to work with. As for the resolution, you're going to see individual pixels, but it's still a very usable resolution. So the overall build, it's very solid. The design looks good except for these seven physical shortcut buttons which should be aligned to the control wheel but other than that I think it looks good and this pen display it's very thin almost as thin compared to my laptop now this is actually a monitor which means you will need to connect this to a computer and a power source which I have done so here so right now I have two cables from the pen display connected to my laptop and this is the mini display to HDMI adapter. They have provided a HDMI cable so you can use either mini display or full size HDMI and this is the USB port that's providing the data and power. If your computer can provide sufficient power through the USB port, you do not need to use the USB wall adapter included. Colors of this pen display look good out of the box. I've already color calibrated this and got a readout of 100% sRGB support and 91% O2B RGB. So color accuracy, it's quite good. The maximum brightness that I recorded is just 150 nits, which is not that bright, but for indoor use, it's perfectly sufficient. A matte screen protector is already applied onto the display, so be careful not to peel it off. This screen protector is the type without the aggressive anti-glare, so you can still see the reflections quite clearly. And this screen protector is considered smooth. It does provide a little bit of friction to give you some control, but overall the drawing uh, experience with the pen tip on the surface, it's considered smooth, not slippery. Screen protectors with aggressive anti-glare will have a more tactile feel but um, the anti-glare will create white haze when there are reflections on the screen so there are pros and cons to each type of screen protector. This is not a laminated display so there is actually a gap between the drawing surface and the actual screen beneath but it's a very small gap so parallax is not a problem here. The cursor tracks the pen tip quite accurately except when the pen tip is near the left and right edge of the display where you are going to see the cursor move away from the pen tip. So here it's alright but when it's less than one centimeter away from the left and right edge you can start to see the misalignment. The misalignment happens only on the left and right edges, not at the top and bottom. I've already calibrated the pen and the display to remove parallax and misalignment, but there is still misalignment on the left and right. When the pen is at the left, the cursor will move further to the left. And when the pen is near the right side, the cursor will move further right. This is not a deal breaker yet because I can still click on the things that are on the right side easily like this small icon here and the scroll bar. I have seen misalignment where the cursor actually goes to the left side and when my cursor is towards the right, the cursor is at the left, there is no way for me to click on the scroll bars or buttons on the sides. Misalignment at the edges is a minor annoyance but thankfully the accuracy of the pen is quite good for the rest of the display. 
And now let's see what the driver can do. Now the Windows and Mac drivers, they are pretty similar. So I'm just going to show you the Windows version. So this is where we can customize the pen, the two side buttons to different mouse click, keyboard shortcuts, and other predefined functions. For the pressure sensitivity, you can adjust it using this curve by dragging the point manually. This is fantastic because some drivers, they only allow you to adjust the curve with a slider. It's not as accurate compared to being able to adjust the curve directly. This is great. And this pen, by the way, supports up to slightly over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. If you are a left-handed user, this is where you can change the rotation of the display. To calibrate the pen and display to remove parallax, you can click this Start Calibration button here. But before you can calibrate, you actually have to set your Windows system to extended monitor mode, which means you have to use dual monitors for some reason. So I'm not sure if you can calibrate if this display is your one and only display. There's this option to enable Windows ink which you have to turn on in order to have pressure sensitivity with photoshop and when you have windows ink turned on you won't be able to select text with the pen you will have to use your mouse so early on i'm using the pen and now i'm using the mouse thankfully within the drawing software you can still use the pen to drag and select text you just can't do this outside of drawing software and this is where you can assign specific keyboard shortcuts to the seven physical shortcut buttons on the side. You can create shortcut groups. So if you have a set of shortcuts for Illustrator, you can select Illustrator here and create shortcuts for Illustrator. And you can have a different set of shortcuts for Photoshop or for whatever software you use. And these are the options available when you click on the drop down menu. You can assign mouse clicks, keyboard shortcuts, and here are some predefined functions. For accurate mode, it will make your cursor move slowly so that you can draw more accurately. This is the pen eraser toggle. Monitor switch allows you to switch the cursor from one display to another when you are using two displays. And this is the dial function switch, which changes the functionality of the wheel, of the control wheel. And this is where you can run certain software. And if you do not need the shortcuts, you can choose not to use them. You can also customize shortcuts for the control wheel. So in this case here, I want to have my own keyboard shortcuts. To decrease, I'm going to have this left arrow and to increase the right arrow. You can input whatever keys you want using your keyboard. With the shortcuts assigned, I can now press this button in the middle of the wheel to switch between the different functionalities. So left and right, I can turn the wheel to rotate my canvas in Medibank Paint Pro. I can press again for brush zoom. You can see the brush size change here and press one more button for zoom in and zoom out. But unfortunately, here I can zoom out, I cannot zoom in. Now this glitch happens to Mediband Paint Pro and Kritar, but for Photoshop and Clip Studio, the zoom in and out for the wheel, it works fine. Initial activation force is minimal, so I can draw thin lines very easily. And I'm drawing very slowly right now to test for jitter and to see whether or not I can maintain consistent pressure. So for pens that are not accurate, you will start to see jitter like this, or you may see the line becoming thin and thick randomly. So here, this is very good performance. I'm able to maintain a straight line consistently. This is a very sensitive pen and the transition from thin to thick, it's very smooth. With the various drawing apps that I have tested, the performance, it's very responsive. So let's try some thin lines and thick lines and thin lines again. The drawing surface, it's quite smooth, but as I mentioned, it's not slippery. So this is, this allows me to have pretty good control 
The buttons on the side, they work well. They have very firm feedback. So let me switch back to the brush. I've tested this pen display with Photoshop, Krita, Midibank Paint Pro, and Clip Studio Paint. The overall drawing performance for this pen display, it's quite good, except on Krita, Mac OS, the lines they have jitter. Another thing I discovered is with Medibank Paint Pro on Windows, when I tap on the screen, I don't get those dots for some reason. I have to tap and drag slightly. On Photoshop, there are no problems with the dots. Lines, they taper quite nicely. There is some input lag with Photoshop, so you can see how the line trails behind the pen tip with a gap. The lines here, they are smooth, they turn very smoothly, which is nice. With my normal drawing speed, the input lag, it's not that big of a deal. For Clip Studio Paint on Windows, make sure you choose these settings. Have WinTap turned on and use mouse mode in setting of tablet driver Z. So those settings should turn on pressure sensitivity for you. And if you have problems with pressure sensitivity, you may have to toggle Windows Ink on or off. So this is very responsive. And the lines, the pressure sensitivity, they work really well. This is Krita on Windows. I have problems using the scroll wheel to zoom in, so I have to actually use the keyboard shortcut to zoom in right now. I can zoom out, but I cannot zoom in. Another thing I found out is when I zoom out to draw, sometimes the lines, they have jitter, but when I zoom in to draw, which is what I'm doing so right now, the lines, they are very smooth. And this is quite responsive as well. There is no tilt sensitivity. And right now I'm drawing with Krita on Mac OS. This is at 100% zoom. Now sometimes when drawing at 100% zoom, I can see jitter. So to get the really smooth lines, I really have to zoom in really close. Dots here work fine. I'm not sure if you can see, but there are slight jitter. This was drawn when it was zoomed out. So when you zoom in like this, you can draw much smoother lines. This is Photoshop on Mac OS. The drawing performance is very good. And this is way more responsive compared to the Windows Photoshop for some reason. The lines, they taper nicely. Pressure sensitivity works very well. And you can expect this level of performance with Medibank Paint Pro as well as Clip Studio. So I'm not going to show you those apps because they perform very well. The lines are really smooth. There is no jitter at all. And the dots, they work well. Alright, to conclude, I like the design, I like how it looks, I like how thin it is. Build quality seems to be quite solid, the buttons, they have firm feedback, and the display colors are fantastic, 100% sRGB and 91% Adobe RGB support, so color accuracy is quite good. Now, there is a gap between the drawing surface and the screen behind, but it's a very small gap, so parallax is not a problem. 
I have some issues with the misalignment when the pen is close to the left and right edges, but not a major deal breaker for me. Drawing performance on Windows and Mac OS with the various drawing apps that I have tried, um, overall it's a pretty good experience except with uh, certain apps. So on Windows, I have problems drawing dots with Midibank Paint Pro. I have zooming problems with Krita and Midibank Paint Pro, but for drawing, uh, performance lines they come out just the way I expect them so that's great on Mac OS with Kritar sometimes I can see jitter with the lines especially when drawing at 100% but for all the other apps the drawing performance is fantastic most of the issues I experience while drawing may be related to the driver so hopefully there will be driver updates in the future to correct those problems the thing is, I have review pen displays from other brands and usually Krita and Midibank, they have the same zoom in and out problem. So in terms of drawing performance, I will give this pen display a thumbs up. This is something I can recommend. And if I have any updates to my review, I'll put all those updates in the text review, which you can find in the video description below. Let me know if you have any further questions in the comment section. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.